What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to tackle a Amazon iOS interview question. We're going to read through the question together. We'll talk about various solutions and then we'll also analyze the runtime and space complexity. If that sounds good, start by dropping a like down below, hit subscribe if you're new here and let's go straight into the question. So I'm going to read the question as it is stated here on the left and then I'll actually explain it if it's not clear. So the question states, you're given an integer array called height of length n. There are n vertical lines drawn such that the two endpoints at i, uh, the two endpoints, lines at i and 0 and i and the ith element in height. Find two lines together on the x-axis that form a container such that the container contains the most water. Now the wording of this question is a little confusing aside from the part that I kind of butchered it, but if we take a look at this visual, the visual makes a lot of sense. So we're given an array which represents the heights of these uh, lines that they've called them or pillars as I like to call them. And what we want to figure out is what two pillars can we pick to get the maximum amount of water if we were to pour the water from the top. Now, the reason this gets a little interesting is logic would say just pick the left and rightmost elements, but the water's height can only be the height of uh, the height of the lesser of the two. In other words, if you pick the first pillar on the left here with the height of one, you're going to get a much wider container selection since you're selecting all the way from the left to the right, but the height of the water will only be one. So one times the length here, you're not going to get as much area. So shown by the red lines here, they've picked these two lines and they can calculate the width of this, multiply the minimum height of these pillars and get an area. And in this case, this will be the max area. They've got an example inputs and example output down below. So we're going to give in, be given an input of height array of integers and an output expectation of an integer as well. So before we start talking through the various solutions here, let's get rid of this boilerplate and let's actually uh, stub out our signature just so we have something to work with. So we're going to go ahead and call this get max area. And it says we're going to take in an input collection of heights, which is going to be an integer array. We're going to return an integer here. And we are just going to start by returning uh, zero at the base case here. So this doesn't yell at me. Down here, I'm going to go ahead and create an input example, and I'm basically just going to copy what they've got at the bottom left here to make sure that we're testing everything correctly. So we've got 1, 8, 6, 2, 5, uh, 4, 8, 3, and 7. Let me make sure I did that correctly. So we've got 1, 8, 6, 2, 5, 4, 8, 3, and 7. Now, obviously, the order of this matters. You can't just sort it because it changes where all the pillars are and it kind of destroys the question's premise altogether. Let's go ahead and get a result by calling this function, and then we're going to implement it uh, together. And we'll actually talk about two ways to implement it. One is more or less the correct answer, and the other is the highly inefficient answer. And we're going to print this out here as well. I'm going to go ahead and say results will be results here. I'm also going to toss some line breaks since my console tends to print out a bunch of junk as well. Let me just go ahead and run it, make sure we see our results printed out here as zero. All right, so while that takes its time, what we are going to do is we're going to think about the two approaches or the simplest approach that we can approach this with. So logic says that we can probably loop from left to right and at every pillar, we can do a nested for loop and calculate the maximum container size that you can get from the position of the first for loop to the second for loop. In other words, if we started at the one, we're going to get another for loop to start at the second pillar here. I will calculate by moving that inner pillar, the inner loop to the end. What's the maximum area we can get from this first pillar and one of these pillars after it? Now. That is definitely a quote unquote valid solution. However, it's not what we're going to implement today. The reason we're not going to implement it is you already start with two for loops that are nested, which means you're going to get a time space, time complexity rather of n squared. In terms of your space, uh, it won't be as bad, but it's definitely not ideal in terms of the time runtime already. So we're not going to even bother going down the n squared routes. Now, what do we want to actually achieve? If we take a look at the figure here, we take a big step back. What we really care to know is the area between two uh, seemingly arbitrary points, one on the left and one on the right. 
So since n squared isn't an ideal solution, it should be fairly apparent that we want to be able to calculate the maximum area with one pass, uh, so O of n. And we ideally want to do this without holding O of n space, O of n memory, we want to do this in O of 1. Maybe we can have a pointer approach, and that's exactly what we are going to do. We're going to have a left pointer that starts at the left, a right pointer that starts at the right, and we're going to move them based on some criteria, and we'll talk about that criteria in a moment, and we'll, we're going to calculate the maximum area that we get by multiplying the distance between the left and right pointer, multiplied by the height of the lesser two pillars. So in this case, we're going to multiply by the height of this right pillar. So that's enough of talking. Let's actually get into the code. So first and foremost, some good questions you want to clarify with your interviewer is if you actually get any height here, we're going to assume that we're going to either get a valid input or we'll get an empty input. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do here is validate that height collection isn't empty. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is if it is empty, we're just going to return negative one. That'll be the end of that since we can't calculate anything. Now, like I was explaining, we're going to start by creating a left pointer as well as a right pointer. All right. And what we want to go ahead and do is also create a variable which will hold our running results as we go ahead and uh, do a while loop down below. And we're going to call this max area. We're going to want to return max area. And this is where we're going to actually do uh, the quote unquote work for our solution. Let me go ahead and add a space there. Now, what we actually want to do here is rather simple while left is less than right, so while the pointers haven't collided yet, we want to do two things. We want to uh, recalculate max area, and we want to move the pointers. So how do we actually go ahead and do this? Well, recalculating the max area is actually fairly simple. So we're gonna say the current uh, max area that we can achieve from the left and right pointer is the minimum of the heights at left and the minimum of that and the height at the right. And let me go ahead and actually uh, start line breaking this a little bit. So maybe we'll go ahead and say this is, um, let me call this min height here. And let's see if I can uh, expand this just a smidge so everything doesn't roll over onto the next line. So here we have the minimum height of these two pointer positions. And we're gonna say the current height is going to be the min height uh, multiplied by the distance between these pointers, so we're going to say right minus left. All right, so that'll be the current height. So let's actually call this current height. Let's be better about naming. And we're going to go ahead and say max area will either be the max of the max area, so whatever we are currently assigned to it, or the current height. Now, now that we have assigned the max area, either it'll remain the same or it'll be this new current height, we want to move the pointers. If we think about how we can move these, the only pieces of information we really have is the left and the right side. So we can strictly look at the height of the element at the left pointer, the height of that pillar, and the element at the right pointer. And ideally what we can say is if the element at the left pointer is less than, its height is less than the thing at the right pointer, we can increment left, otherwise we'll decrement right. The otherwise case also handles if the two pointers have the same height. And by doing this over and over, you're going to realize that we actually achieve our goal. So let me actually write it out, and then let's, let's give it a run. So we're going to say if the height at the thing at left is less than the thing, the height at the thing at right, the right pointer, we're going to go ahead and increment uh, left. Now, of course, we're not going to overflow our boundary since our while loop would have broken at that point. In the else case, in this case, either the right side is larger or the left and right side are equal, we're going to go ahead and just do the opposite, which is decrementing right. And this is all that we need to do to actually calculate the max area. Now, before I get too excited, let's uh, test our solution. Let me actually read through it first really quick to make sure we don't have any silly typos. So the first thing that we're going to do here is with our input, we're going to verify with a guard that it's not empty. If it is, we'll just go ahead and return negative one. Otherwise, we're going to uh, we're going to go ahead and create a max area starting out as zero. This is what we're going to be using for our running results. We'll have a left pointer and a right pointer. We're going to run a while loop while the left and right don't collide. We're going to calculate the current height by taking the minimum height of the thing at left and the thing at right. We'll multiply that by the distance between the right minus left. And then we're going to reassign max area. 
Finally, to continue our loop and not get stuck in an infinite loop, we're gonna go ahead and either increment our left pointer or decrement the right pointer. Finally, we'll result, we'll, we'll actually return our result here. So let me go ahead and actually give this a run. Once again, my input is 18625 which matches, I believe, what's down here. Let me give that a read, 18625 We expect a output of 49. So let's go ahead and give this a run and let's see if I did this correctly. All right, we get an output of 49. Now, if we actually go ahead and do something interesting here, let me actually print out max area. So we'll say uh, running results, and I'm gonna go ahead and print out max area. What you'll notice is this max area will uh, start out, let me actually do it before we reassign it. Let us, it's gonna start out as zero, and we're slowly going to be reassigning it and updating it as we find larger max areas. So of course it's zero, it'll start off, let's see, why is it eight? The reason it's eight is it'll start off at the one, and it'll start out at the seven, right? The length, the difference between these pointers is eight, and the minimum height of these two things is one. So one times eight gives you eight. And it's gonna to continue to do that all the way until the end of the collection at one pass until we get the final results. Now, one thing you might've noticed is we actually end up getting 49 at this point, once we have moved the pointers two more times. So perhaps there is an optimization here that we can do. I'm not sure if I can think of one from the top of my head since we still need to consider the remainder of the collection. However, taking a step back and analyzing the runtime and space complexity, it's pretty good at this point. So the time complexity of this is order of n, n being the input size that we are passing into our uh, function here. Why is it O of n? Because we need to iterate over the entire length of the array, n in this case. The space complexity here is going to be order of one. Now, why is it one? Well, we didn't actually create a collection or any other auxiliary structure the same size of our inputs. The only memory we actually used is always going to be these three pointers here, one to hold on to our running results, and these two for our left and right pointers. So regardless if I pass in a collection of 10, 10 elements or a billion elements, we're going to only use this amount of space and we're only going to loop over it once. And that's basically this question in a nutshell. Now, one last important call out here is you want to also consider and you want to clarify this with your interviewer if you want to handle any other edge cases. Now, in our question, it was explicitly specified that it is a collection of integers coming in uh, and we want to return an integer. Now, if this question takes in doubles or it takes in floating points and there are some pillars with very, very similar uh, heights, you want to clarify things along the lines of how much precision do we care about? Do we want to round to the nearest tenth, hundredth? Do we want to drop all of the fractional points of the float or the double? Can we round it to an in integer, so on and so forth? One other edge case that comes to mind here is if you think about it, we can also get away with checking if there's only one element in our collection since the heights, the max area, uh, actually isn't possible, right? We can't, we actually need at least two elements for us to be able to pour water off the top of it to have the water stay between our pillars. So in this case, what I would actually do is I would adjust this and say, make sure that the height collections count uh, is greater than two. We at least need two or more elements. So we can say greater than or equal to two, or we can say greater than one. If we only have zero elements or one element, we're gonna return negative one because we can't actually calculate an area since we'll want two pointers. And these pointers, if it's one element, will start off at the same index. And that's all I've got for you guys today. So pretty popular and pretty a pretty common question, I'll say. Uh, it's very well known if you've done you know, a little bit of interview prep. Uh, very commonly asked by Amazon, uh, Facebook, Google, various other companies, Netflix, Apple, the likes. Let me know if you've seen this question before, if you've come across it. Let me know if you have a better solution in mind. And uh, if you're new here and haven't done so already, hit subscribe to stay tuned for iOS Swift interview questions, other random thoughts of mine that I go on rants about occasionally. Comment down below if you enjoy this video. Drop a like. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next one.